Okay, so I'm really excited, and the reason why is I just wrote my last exam forever. Um, I just finished school today. That was my last exam. So to celebrate, I'm gonna get out of the house and do something completely different. I'm gonna talk about vintage lenses. So a couple days ago, I've been cleaning out some of my camera stuff because I have accumulated quite a bit over the last few years, and I came across these. So I have an old Minolta lens here that I found. It's a 1.7 Aperture, it's a 50 millimeter. Um, it was given to me for free when I bought an old camera and I also have this old Sigma that was also given to me for free and I've never used these. They just kind of sat there and collected dust. So today I'm just gonna go out for a walk and just take some pictures, shoot some video and just kind of see what these are all about. And the nice thing is these lenses from what I see, um, specifically the Minolta lenses, there's quite a bit online. You can buy these fairly cheap still. So let's see if they're worth it. Um, here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about this place here. Um, this seems to be my go-to place whenever I need to test out anything. It's a little park by my house. Uh, it's got a nice forest. I chose the rainiest day to come out. It just rained, so I'm sure I'm not dressed for the occasion. But anyways, I'm gonna walk around with the lenses and just kind of get some footage and video and goodies, and then we'll get it back to the studio and just kind of see how they turn out in Lightroom. Anyways, let's do this. Another reason why I chose this forest, besides it looks cool, is um, I've never vlogged before out in public, ever. Uh, it's just super weird, so there's nobody here. So yeah, um, this is a first. Hi. Yeah, so on a fun note, um, I got my first soaker. Uh, that's exciting. I forgot about that. I've been hidden away for like three years. Uh, anyways, yay, nature. First lens I'm gonna talk about is the 50 millimeter Minolta rocker lens. I didn't have any issues hooking this up to the adapter. Um, everything was pretty good. There was no vignetting on the sides or in the corners because of the size of the adapter. Uh, everything worked really well as it should. Um, the first thing I noticed when I got this hooked up and I started shooting was getting used to having all the manual focus and aperture right on the lens. Once I got used to that, I actually preferred it. There's something really nice about having your aperture and your your uh, focus right, in the, right within two fingers. Um, yeah, it's, it's quick, it's easy. Uh, you can get shots fast. That was a plus shooting with this lens is having everything right at the tips of my fingers. Everything I got out of this lens, I could totally use. And I, I think I mentioned it before, it had more of a contrasty vibe to it and that could be just because it's older glass or maybe that's just something that's in my head. But um, yeah, I was able to pull it in the Lightroom, develop no problem, everything looked really good. The other lens that I was trying out was this beast here. It's a Sigma zoom lens, it's from 80 to 200. Now, compared to the 50 millimeter Minolta, this thing is a beast. Um, first of all, it weighs a ton. It's it's solid, like it's got a lot of metal components to it, which is good, solid. I did learn I have to get out there and practice more with zoom lenses, especially when it comes to 200 millimeter. It was nice to have this because there was like some things in the background that I saw that I was able to zoom in and shoot right away. But like my instinct is always to go with like, you know, like a 20 millimeter or a 35 millimeter and get that wide angle kind of thing. But you can do some really cool stuff with a zoom lens, especially if you want to play around with compression. So um, if you want to make things feel a little bit more exaggerated and dramatic, using compression, using a zoom lens to get the shots could really help out. Now, this one, you can tell it's older. Uh, there's some, I noticed there's some glass that's a little loose, I, yeah, and um, it definitely needs a thorough cleaning. That's what I found when I got into Lightroom, that there was uh, dust that I missed that I don't know where it's coming from, if it's something on the inside or, I don't know. But um, other than that, it was a lot of fun. 
uh, to shoot with this. So what I'm trying to say, having a couple of vintage glass pieces in your collection isn't a bad idea. In fact, it can create some really cool images for you and create some really neat, unique shots. And the nice thing is, especially when it comes to like the Minolta stuff, it's still out there. You can buy it fairly cheap. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money on a on a high-end 50 millimeter for your Sony or your Canon, this is a good option. This is something that I would totally recommend and this is something that's gonna stay in my collection and I'm gonna use it because it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed the experience of my time shooting with this lens. Anyways, thank you very much. Um, now that I'm done school, let's make some videos. Take care everyone.